about coming home with me. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, everyone. So in the beginning, America was a pretty great place. People banded together, created laws to keep everyone safe. And you know what? It worked. Turns out that if you build a country with borders, a military, and a well-regulated law enforcement, prosperity won't be far behind. But you know what comes after that, don't you? Complacency, a false sense of security, then decline followed by destruction. Because when the simplest of minds don't have to worry about barbarians at the gates, they start to develop something called luxury beliefs. You know, beliefs unconnected to reality. The belief that the bad guys are actually good guys, and to disagree with that makes us the bad guys. Because we're the oppressors who keep thugs from enjoying fun stuff like theft and violence and drug abuse and street pooping. <laughs> also known as a walking tour of San Francisco. <laughs> But the saddest thing about luxury beliefs is not how naive they are, it's that they can kill, literally. Last week in Philly, a left-wing activist named John Kruger was brutally murdered in his own home. On Twitter and in print previously, however, Kruger had downplayed the violence gripping Philly and so many of America's cities. Do I think Kruger deserved to be murdered? Of course not. What happened to him is a tragedy. I hope they catch the scumbag who did it. I don't envy Philly police who are already dealing with muggers, dealers, and Eagles fans. <laughs> then in Brooklyn, New York, another left-wing activist and his girlfriend happened to cross what is commonly known as a New York street crazy. All of these street crazies are scary. Some of them are more than that. Ryan Carson was stabbed to death for being at the wrong place at the wrong time. This is the part where I might tell a joke, but there's nothing funny about Ryan Carson's death. He was likely told over the course of his adult life that believing that some people are dangerous, crazy, or just evil, that's a terrible prejudice. Unfortunately, the people who sold him that idea, usually progressive professors, they weren't around to help him that night. And if they were, I doubt they would have jumped in because liberal professors aren't really known for their brass balls. Remember the anti-police activist who was carjacked in her own driveway? Talk about convenient as far as carjackings go. It was a short walk home. <laughs> But she discovered something else about luxury beliefs. They'll get your luxury car stolen. In the end, progressive beliefs are like peacock feathers. They're all for show, and they attract predators. If you recall, she posted on Facebook the next day, quote, these criminals will not win. We need to take back our city. Well, let me translate that for you. I've been an idiot, and I'm joining the NRA. <laughs> yeah. She... Oh, you can clap. She's slowing me down. She backs the blue now that she's black and blue. <laughs> Things are getting so bad in our cities, even that Bible of luxury beliefs, the New York Times, is starting to lose faith. Last week, they wrote that America's downtowns are now spiraling from one crisis to the next, as spiking rates of homelessness, drug ODs, violent crime, and psychosis threaten to overwhelm the public safety once considered basic to the country's major cities. Wow, looks like there's one writer whose BLM t-shirt didn't save him from a mugging. I hope his biggest problem now is how to get that Biden-Harris bumper sticker off his Audi. <laughs> but of course, some true believers refuse to wake up. In Chattanooga, a father of three was murdered by a guy with 66 prior arrests. But what's the city's mayor calling it? A senseless act of gun violence. Yeah, it was senseless, all right. It's senseless that this predator was still on the street. And, Mayor, that's not gun violence. That's criminal behavior sanctioned by the blind faith of an activist who holds political office. Now, we all know that in the church of luxury beliefs, the high priests are the Washington Dems. They don't just preach this stuff. They enforce it and unknowingly put their own lives at risk, which is one way of getting them out of office. So you think that when reality reaches one of them, their pals might start to question a bit. Democratic Congressman Henry Cuela just had a gun shoved in his face by three young carjackers, who, by the way, remain at large. I hate that phrase, remain at large. If they're so large, they should be easy to find. <laughs> of course, carjackings in our nation's capital are up 106 percent. The only deterrent is the traffic. When asked about it by Peter Ducey, White House flag Karine Jean-Pierre had this reassuring response. So if President Biden's policies are helping, bring crime down, would he be comfortable with somebody borrowing his Corvette and parking it on the street overnight in Southeast D.C.? I'm not going to get into hypotheticals. I'm just going to get into the facts about what this president has done. If a member of Congress is not safe on the streets of the nation's capital, who is? Look, we're grateful and relieved that the congressman is unharmed. 
we understand what communities are going through across the country, not just in D.C. There's always going to be work, more work to be done. Mm, great answers. She's the Baghdad Bob of the Beltway. <laughs> she always says there's more work to do about everything, meaning we've done nothing about it, but we'll get to it after we paint the White House like a rainbow. So while the Dems ignore all this, the rest of us aren't. Look at our nation's retailers. If you want to know where not to move to, just look where Target is closing stores. <laughs> it's ironic, ironic that a store called Target has to close because of violence. <laughs> Seattle, SF, Oakland, Portland, New York. A closed target is like a waved white flag. You win, scum. Look, the Dems can only outrun reality for so long, especially if you're built like this. And while, <laughs> and while the Republicans have their faults, at least they live in the real world. And it's a world that recognizes that luxury beliefs are more than dumb. They're fatal. So will things finally change when progressives realize what's killing them is progressivism? For the progressive filter denies reality and instructs you to throw caution to the wind since caution is discriminatory and therefore racist. Crossing the street to avoid a gang of thugs, that makes you a bigot. You should risk getting stabbed just to show that you're an ally. Fact is, we saw this ahead of time. And what did the libs say? You listen to conservative media, you would think that, you know, uh, it, entire cities are just, you know, in, in brawled in fights and fires and whatever. We went out and had a great dinner in New York City tonight. <laughs> you know, both those clowns are gone, but their legacy of misery rages on. The fact is, social justice should come with a warning label. Caution, believing in this tripe will only get you murdered. Let's welcome tonight's guest. Like his books, he's often bound in leather. Author and Fox News contributor, Douglas Murray. <laughs> If you need a quiet place to think, try one of his shows. Writer and comedian Joe DeVito. <laughs> Taxidermist call her lifelike. New York Times bestselling author and Fox News contributor Cat Tip. <laughs> He's immense, intense, and makes a lot of sense. New York Times bestselling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion. <laughs> So, Tyrus, you've been uh, away for a couple days, so I want to talk to you first about this because I'm sensing that in order to be a progressive, you are not supposed to be situationally aware. You are not supposed to heed, like, warning signs, like, maybe there's a crazy guy coming at you and you should cross the street with your girlfriend because that would be somehow an affront to your progressive virtue signaling. Or even just, you know, you, we talk about all the time, until you're affected... Mm -hmm. The unaffected are affected. Even when they're affected, they still don't get it. Yeah. It's, like, when I watched that video back, a man loses his life like that. And there was, there was still two adult human beings in that video. Mm -hmm. But no one helped anyone. Yeah. Like, throw your purse at him. Throw a straw, scream, yell, ask for help. Do something. As soon as he pulled the knife, unless the volume was weird. I mean, I watched it over and over again, like, just shocked mm -hmm. at the behaviors of, like, you don't want to offend him? Yeah. He's killing somebody that you care about. Yeah. I don't understand that. And then the guy is still at large. Yeah. And, and, and you and, can't ID him? Yeah. He apparently works at a school. And the friends of the victim are saying the murdered victim would not want this guy in trouble. Yes, he would. He's a victim of a system. Yes, he's not a victim of a system. Like, they, they love to say that because the mission is falling apart. Mm. And now we're seeing the ones, no matter what happens, they're going to stick with the mission. Mm -hmm. Even though one of the no one should lose their life like that. Yeah, I don't care what his politics were. He wouldn't like me. I wouldn't like him. But the last thing I would do if I saw that going down, throw a trash can, do something, mm -hmm. swing your purse, yeah. do something instead of telling him he wouldn't have wanted. He wanted to grow old. Yeah, he wanted to get married and have a family. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see he wanted to go home that night. Yeah. When you look at the reality of New York, Douglas, you have to change to accommodate the risks, whether it makes yeah. you look like a racist or not. Who gives a well, I mean, it's, look, it's the same in city after city. I've spent most of this week in Philly, and I mean, it's even worse there. I mean, mm -hmm. incalculably worse even than New York. And all these cities we just keep allowing to just like, fall through the floor and pretend that it's sort of not going on or hope it doesn't affect us. And there's several, there's several like, major problems with this. And the first one is... I, I, I'm so glad you showed the formerly 
television host Chris Cuomo. Yeah. Because he, he covered himself in glory after this attack, I noticed. Mm -hmm. He said on social media that this showed why citizens should all learn, like, martial arts to defend ourselves. I was like... N no, I don't have to become a black belt in karate if I just want to ride the subway. Yes. I, I don't see why you've got to be a master jujitsu artist to go and go out for the evening with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the other thing is this, this weird thing, and it's again, it's in city after city, it's always about the autonomy of the criminal. Mm -hmm. but, and very often, very, very disturbed people, as we can see all the time in this city, as you see in all the time in Democrat-led cities across America, the really disturbed individuals who in any other country would be in an asylum or a hospital or a prison. Mm -hmm. And always we hear from the Dems, no, 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 they have autonomy. They, 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 you can't decide that for your life. These people don't have autonomy. They're crazed. They're high on crack. The public need to have autonomy, mainly the autonomy not to be Stabbed. Exactly. A basic right. <laughs> it's a basic right, Joe. I don't want to get stabbed. I pay taxes, Joe. It's, it's not too much to ask, and I agree with Tyrus. If I were there, I definitely would have swung my purse. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what it's like? Uh, it's like we're in the final days of Rome, but with Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. That's what we're experiencing. And it's, well, at least in Rome, they had them bread and circuses. We can't even have the gluten now, so they, they were ahead of us on that. <laughs> It's, it's ridiculous that they seem so surprised by these things, so shocked. Mm. I don't understand what their problems with the equation, because it says, well, we, we have these people who are violent repeat offenders. What are you going to do with them? Oh, we're going to keep letting them out. Mm. Oh, uh, well, you're going to have a lot of police around? No, we're going to defund the police. Well, are innocent people allowed to defend themselves? No, we're not. So it's not even A plus B. It's just A over and over again. It's yeah. A plus A plus A plus A. <laughs> and we've even seen it with, like, the... the, the uh, representative in, in Minnesota. Mm. Now she's saying, we've got to take back the streets. Yeah, from the people you handed the streets over to. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It is weird, though, Kat. You, we, I, we always talk about the, when the policy's consequences finally meet the policy's originators, they'll change their minds. But it doesn't feel like that. They're, gonna, they're just going to deny reality and continue denying, like the friends of the victim. Yeah, I, I never like when I'm dead. Ne don't say she would have said this. Yeah, <laughs> that's so Be true. Because I've said plenty of things. <laughs> Just replay those things. <laughs> like, don't make up new things. Yeah. I, I just don't do that. I mean, look, it's obviously super sad. Uh, you know, I. I don't like just walk around Crown Heights with my boyfriend, but I used to. At 4 a.m.? I, I used to. I dated a guy mm. in Crown Heights. And luckily for me, the worst thing that happened to me was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not even close. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also, it's so bad. It's also people can't protect themselves, right? Like if you saw me walking around, no one would be like, oh, I wonder if, if she has a gun. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she's risking, you know, years in the clink to have a felony charge for having a weapon illegally. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, you, something like that can definitely happen. And it's, it's really, really sad. It's really, really sad. And it's really, really scary. I had a guy today on my block screaming words that I can't say at people threatening to kill them and beat them up. Every single, like, it was absolutely unhinged. But, and it was, it went, what, can no. Can I ask you, though, were you just kind of like, eh? That's Wednesday. No, I, I'm, like... I'm out there. I call 911. It rings like five times. I go, oh, f him. Are there people out on the street? He was actually going after women, and then it went quiet, which makes me think maybe there was a cop there. But it was absolutely insane. This is not some kind of isolated no, thing. No, no. This is every freaking day. Yep. Every, that's, every day. That's the thing about the video that's so strange is that he doesn't even acknowledge her. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it, it's just, there's got to be more to the story of this man's death because it just, it just watching it just looks... Yeah, they might have just been high. They might have been drunk. Some, I mean, it just seemed such a casual response to somebody knifing you. Yeah. Well, they're, just, they're, they're running out of places to tell us to not be. Yeah. Because yeah. they tell you, don't be on the street late at night, but don't be on the subway, don't be in your car, yeah. and also don't be at home. You know, you, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Because I'm a bit, you know where you can be safe, though? You know there won't be anybody there to hurt you. We'll be at one of Joe DeVito's shows. <laughs> what a tea! All right, oh, why? Uh, that guy was a compliment. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.